Hi there, this is Kayla from Kibia walking you through a soldering demo today. Let's talk safety. The flux from solder makes a fume that is not great for humans in excess quantities. Here at Kibio, we do recommend you get cozy with a fume extractor, which, like it reads on the tin, will take away the fumes and keep your eyes and lungs safe. In terms of keeping your fingers safe, please be cognizant of your soldering iron tip. If it isn't in your hand, it should be sitting in its station. And if you need to step away, please be sure to turn it off. And I know you've heard this a million gazillion times, but also wash your hands after soldering. While the world has been washing hands for the sake of germs, we're doing it in this context to prevent lead poisoning. Now we begin. Part of the video I'll be doing left-handed and part of it will be right-handed. You can see what works best for you and your setup. I'm working on a pre-built order for the sink today, so I'll walk you through some soldering pointers while I build. Solder, and in our office, rosin solder, comes in different sizes. We tend to use the smaller solder for hot swaps, for example, and the larger solder for switches. You may not think it's that big of a difference since they're so thin, but when you're working with tiny bits and bobs, it's worth considering what size you need for your project. I'll show you a quick example with this little hot swap socket here. Check out our description box for the link if you'd like some. The reason the thin solder is great here is it helps prevent me from accidentally flooding the hot swap. And by flooding, I mean you're getting solder inside the cylindrical bit where the leg for the switch should go. If you're using solder that is too big, that can become a problem. Easily avoidable though. A good rule of thumb if you're just starting out is to bend your solder at 90 degrees. You want to aim for one centimeter of bend. This method helps you quantify how much solder you're using. I solder by the feel and look of things, but the solder bend is a great strategy if you're just starting out. Oh, wait, I literally do this without thinking about it, but take a moment to tin the tip of your soldering iron. Tinning is basically putting a little new solder onto your iron and then cleaning it off. The brass sponge is your friend. It's a good practice to say hello often. Small side note, the brass sponge also goes by a few other names. Next, touch the tip of the soldering iron to the leg of the switch and the joint. The joint is the little metal circle encompassing your switch leg. You'll also hear the words bond pad or contact to describe the same PCB anatomy part. Touching both the switch leg and the joint, heat them so they will better spread the solder. Tap the end of your solder to the heated pieces around the iron tip and it should melt. Hold the iron tip in position for maybe about three seconds, but not more than five. You've attached one switch leg. Since I am working on the sink, that's one of 203 more solders to go. It sounds like a lot, but the process can feel a bit like meditating if that helps it feel a bit better. 
Once you've done this six or seven times, your iron tip will likely have a bit of orangey black crust from built up flux. You want to scrape that off by wiping it on your brass sponge, which will clean your soldering iron. So now let's talk about what a good solder should look like. You need to look for three things. One, is your solder completely filling the joint? Two, does it make a triangle shape when you look at it from the side? And three, it isn't so much that it makes a round sphere. If you can check those boxes, you are good to go and you have a solid solder. Let's demystify desoldering. It is totally okay if a solder does not go like you want it to. Many of us have been there and will likely be there again. Mistakes happen. All you need to do is heat your soldered point. After it becomes melty, place the desoldering tool on top of the solder joint and press the button. That way it will suck up all the solder that you don't want to be there and take it away. All done. Thanks for joining me for another build of the sink. Be sure to let us know down in the comments what other videos you guys might like to see. See you later.